Uh, last night I was texting Brian O'Connor, talking to him about my uh, speech. And I spoke to Todd Winberg earlier too. And he said the best thing is to keep it short. So I want to thank all of you. I'm deeply honored for this award. Thank you. Good. Gotcha tonight. <laughs> All right, it's been a while since I've given a speech, so uh, I might mess up. I'm already messing up the mic here. I would like to congratulate the other inductees, Tammy, David, and Tony, for their induction. <laughs> for their induction to tonight. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Tonight, and with their great careers at, they had at Creighton. It is an honor to be inducted in this year's class to forever be remembered in the Blue Jay family. I am humbled to be mentioned along with all the past inductees. It is great to be back here at Creighton where my career began. I am amazed by all the changes that have been made to the athletic facilities here. They are a true reflection of the ongoing dedication that Father Lannon, Bruce Rasmussen, the athletic department and coaches have for Creighton. I want to thank all those people who made this night possible. Father Lannon, the Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, which represents the Alumni Association, Athletic Board, coaching staff, and Jay Backers. I'm very grateful to all of you for considering me worthy enough of this award. I will continue to uphold all the great traditions and values that Creighton stands for. Thank you, Rachel, for all that you did for getting my family here tonight. I know you did a lot of work. Barb Epps, thank you. Anna, thank you for the gift package and everyone else that made it possible for me to be, my family to be here tonight. I was told that the speech had to be PG and not R-rated. So unfortunately, most of what I want to talk about, I will not be able to. That is probably good because my wife is here tonight and I would like to stay married after the night is over. I still get goosebumps every time that I come back to Omaha. It brings back so many great memories of the years that I played at Creighton and the teammates. That sounds good. And the teammates that I shared those memories with. No team or coaching staff in my career has ever compared to the ones that I've played with here. That 91 College World Series team was the highlight of my career. And to have played in front of our hometown fans made it even more special. As a kid, it was my ultimate dream to come to Rosenblatt Stadium and being in the 91 team made a childhood dream come true. People may think that playing in the 92 Olympics and being a first round pick were the highlights of my career. Although they were great accomplishments, it didn't compare to that 91 season, playing with guys that played for one another rather than caring about individual stats. That is what made this team special and that is hard to find in today's sports. If there was only one complaint I had about that 91 College World Series team, it would have been who was in charge of putting Wichita State in our bracket. <laughs> Being from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I wasn't recruited by many Division I colleges, so it was a very unique story on how I became a Creighton Blue Jay. It was dumb, and I emphasize dumb, luck on how I ended up here. Our pitching coach, Todd Winberg, was on a recruiting trip to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Just got another player. Somehow he got lost and just happened to be driving by the baseball stadium I was playing at. Luckily he had his car window down and the announcer had said, J Chad McConnell had just hit a tremendous home run. So he decided, well, since I'm lost, I'll stop in and watch the game. 
So uh, I had a good game that night, and Jim got on, or Todd got on the phone and called Coach Hendry and told him, hey, we need to get this guy to come to Creighton. I know Todd will not admit this, but personally, I think he was supposed to be in Sioux City, Iowa. <laughs> and that is why. <laughs> And that is why you could not find the person he was actually recruiting that day. <laughs> At least he got the suit part of the city right. But how you end up at the wrong state is beyond me. <laughs> Thank you, Todd, for having no idea where you were and stopping to watch my game. I'm lucky they did not have GPS back then. <laughs> Thankfully, Jim took his advice, and that is how I was recruited by Creighton. I can remember coming to Creighton being nervous and not knowing what to expect. One of the first players that I met was Scott Stahoviak. My first impression of him was he had no arrogance about him, and he was a down-to-earth person. He had this ability to make you feel at ease and was the most genuine, caring, and honest person I have ever met. He was the type of person you always wanted to be around and I will always be grateful to him for everything he instilled in me as a player and a person. The one thing I noticed about the rest of the team was they did everything together. There was a genuine bond that they all shared, and it is something very rare. They all made, you, made me feel as part of, a blue, of the Blue Jay family right away. That just shows what kind of school and sports program Creighton represented. Jim told me he wouldn't be able to offer me a full scholarship. But being young, of course, I was hoping for a full scholarship, so I took another recruiting trip to Rice, Uni Rice University in Houston. They offered me a full scholarship, and of course, I made a verbal commitment. No sooner did I get back home from the trip from Rice and walk in the front door, the phone started ringing. It was Jim Hendry. I knew he must have heard that I made a verbal commitment to Rice. I was honestly afraid to answer the phone. It was like being a kid having your dad waiting for you so he could chew you out for doing something wrong. <laughs> to my surprise, it was nothing like that. Jim told me he knew he couldn't offer me what Rice could financially, but he did say he could offer me something that Rice would never be able to. He said I would have the opportunity to start my freshman year and be a part of something very special. By special he meant this team had tremendous talent and I would be a part of a winning program. He said you will play with a team that will give and do anything for one another on and off the field. That was the one great thing about Coach Henry. You could feel the passion he had for baseball his players, and winning. After that phone call, I knew I was meant to be a Creighton Blue Jay. It also didn't hurt that I found out that we were going to Hawaii for a 10-day spring trip. <laughs> I do have a couple of PG-rated stories that I can share with you, though. Very few, but I have a couple. As you know, most teammates usually give each other nicknames. When I was in high school, our nicknames always came from a part of someone's first or last name. Well, when I got to Creighton, I earned the nickname Doogie from the TV series Doogie Hauser, MD, who was a brilliant kid doctor. It was our first practice. I didn't have any black spikes. One of the pitchers gave me a pair of shoes. It had the name Pudge written on the inside of them. He told me to get, give these shoes back to him after practice. Well, when practice was over, I was sitting on the bench next to a pitcher named Tom Schaefer. Of course, I didn't know everyone all that well, so I asked him who this Pudge guy was, because I had the spikes and I needed to return them. He looked at me in a serious face. I think he's like, you got to be kidding me. He said, I'm Pudge. I gave him a puzzled look back. I said, no, you're Schaefer. We went back and forth like this for a few seconds. Then he finally said, no, Pudge is my nickname. I was try still trying to figure out why they would call him Pudge when it had nothing to do with his real name. So this is how I earned the nickname Doogie. 
I was actually flattered because I was thinking these guys must think I'm really smart. <laughs> the next story has to do with my hitting and fielding coach, Jack Dom. Coach Henry was out of town at the time and called, called Coach Dom to see how I was doing as far as hitting. Now Brian O'Connor and I were the only two freshman recruits that year, and he was a pitcher. So when Dom told Jim how I was doing, he paused for a while and said, hey, I don't know how to tell you this, Jim, but uh, Colin, he's not hitting worth a darn. This O'Connor kid, he's hitting the crap out of the ball. Dom, I want to thank you for finally figuring this out because I would have had a short-lived pitching career. <laughs> I owe a great deal of recognition to my teammates and coaches because this night would not have been possible if it wasn't for them. Thank you to all of you for making me the player I was. Jim, words can't express how grateful I am for all you have done for me. You gave me the opportunity of a lifetime. And I have never played for a better coach and human being than you. I owe so much of my success to you and will always remember the compassion you had for all of us. Thank you, Jim. One player that knew me the best was Brian O'Connor. We ended up being roommates our freshman year. I know at the beginning of our freshman year, he was probably thinking, how the heck did I get room with this guy? <laughs> Brian had a huge heart and didn't complain one bit of ha with having to do deal with all the antics I pulled that year, and there were quite a few. He always had your back and would do anything for you with no questions asked. I thought of him like a brother, and that is why it comes as no surprise that he is having such great success as a head baseball coach at the University of Virginia. And now there's Brian O'Brien, Abuch. He's a left-handed pitcher, of course, so they're different already to begin with. We had an inter-squad game one year. During the fall, we always played inter-squad games. We never played, really played against other teams. And I can remember, he, he, he was really competitive and he wore his, his emotions on his sleeve. I can remember him having two strikes on me and I knew he wanted to strike me out so bad. And uh, he did throw a good pitch. It was an outside changeup on the corner and I just happened to hit a home run or at center right over the right field fence. And here's Brian O'Connor, takes his glove and just throws it down on the mound and starts kicking dirt. And I thought he was, I actually thought he was going to start crying. <laughs> I chuckled on the way to first base. Brian, I'm sorry. I know it was probably a little wind blown, but sorry to do that to you. Um, last but not least, oh, and by the way, McCafferty, I don't know how they, why they let you in here. And for, you know, I don't know how you got in, to be honest with you. Last but not least, my family. Casey, my eight-year-old son, you want to come up here and help me out? Anybody? Say hi, say hi. Hi. All right. Need you to help me out with this, okay, bud? Um, I want to thank all of my family. Uh, being so close, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I have a lot of family members here. Um, it's going to be tough for me. I'd like to thank my mom and dad, especially giving me the genes that you gave me, blessing me with such great genes, and supporting me my whole life, letting me play all the sports that I wanted to, not pushing anything on me, and letting me do what I wanted to do, and especially supporting me these last few years after being done with baseball. You've been a huge support for me, and I love you more than words can say. Janet, thank you, too, for all that you have done and for making my dad very happy and for your support. 
for my two brothers that are here, Mark and Seth. I'm very happy that you are here to be able to share this moment with me and your wife, Sarah, and Carla. I'm grateful that you are here. My Aunt Linda, who uh, followed me everywhere, her and her friend Marty, I don't think missed probably more than 25% of my games in Creighton and when I was playing for the Phillies. Thank you for all the support and the $20 bills that you slipped me when I was <laughs> playing too. That was always nice. Um, my sister Jenny, I don't think she's in the room right now. There she is. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, my Uncle John, uh, excuse me. Um, it is a great honor that you are here tonight. It means a great deal to me. Um, going through what you're going through right now and to have the strength to be here means the world to me and I love you very, very much. Last but not least, I hope I didn't forget anybody. Did I forget anybody, Dad? I hope I didn't forget anybody. Oh, I, I, that's what I'm saying, last but not least. My wife, Amanda, the strongest person I know, uh, diagnosed with breast cancer a year ago on February 18th. And she was able to overcome that, able to take care of this little guy at the same time, and take care of me also, the strongest woman I know. You're the reason why I am the person I am today. I love you more than anything in the world. And uh, you talked about how you wish you could have been a part of all my Creighton accomplishments, the Olympics, and a lot of the Phillies, things that the Phillies that I did with the Phillies. Um, but you got to be here tonight, the greatest accomplishment of my career the ending, the final chapter of my career. And I would love to thank Creighton for making that possible and everyone else here. Thank you very much.